Hello and welcome to another Vector Tuts Quick Tip screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and I'm going to show you with a few easy steps how to make this metal grill background. First, create a square by clicking on the artboard once with the rectangle tool. I'm just going to enter 800 points in each of the fields. And the square has the default white fill and black stroke. So press the forward slash key to get rid of the fill and then press shift X to exchange the fill and stroke. So I have a square with a black fill only. Then press Command or Control 2 to lock the object. Next, I'm going to take the Ellipse tool to draw a circle. The fill color right now is set to black, so it's not going to show up on top of the black square. So I've just chosen another color, pink. You can make it any color you want. And as before, just click once on the artboard to draw the circle. I'm going to make it 16 points. So rather than copying and pasting again and again and again to make the pattern, we can do that all with a few transform effects. Go up to the Effect menu, Distort and Transform, and choose Transform. We want to make a row of dots, so I know I want to move it 20 points. That'll give me 4 points in between each. And then I'm going to make 40 copies. Click the Preview button, and there you can see the row. Actually, I want to make 39 copies because I've already got 1 for a total of 40. Now if you go to the Appearance panel, you can see the Transform effect there, and you can click on it to edit it if you wanted to. Now we need another row, so I'll go back up to the Effects menu and choose Transform, and I'll get this warning that tells me that this is going to apply another Transform effect, and that is in fact what I want, so I'll click Apply New Effect. So I've already worked this out, that I need another row below the first one, and over a little bit. So I'm going to move it horizontally 10 points and vertically negative 20 points, which will put it below the original line. I'll make one copy and click OK. And you can see now that in the Appearance panel, both transform effects are listed. Now to finish out the grid, I need to apply one more transform effect. So I'll go back up to the Effects menu. I get that warning again. And yes, I want to apply another effect. And I want to move this down 40 points because I've already got a 20 point more or less width and I'm going to make 19 copies to make a square grid. Click the preview button and there we have it. And once again you can see that all three transform effects are listed in the appearance panel and you can turn them on and off getting back to the original circle. In outline mode you can see that we just have one circle, the rest is all effects. So we want to make these all individual circles, so go up to the Object menu and click Expand Appearance. And now you can see that they are indeed, I don't know, hundreds of circles. Um, there it is in Outline Mode. And I'll zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Now I want to unlock the black square that we first made, and I'll just go up to the Object menu and choose Unlock All. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Command Option 2 or Control Alt 2 on a PC. And I'm going to move this square out just a little bit so that it extends beyond the dots. I want the circles to knock out of the background, so I'm going to have to make a compound path. I'll select the circles and the black square, go up to the object menu, and choose Compound Path Make. Now all that's left to do really is the coloring, so I'm going to fill this grid with a gradient that goes from light gray to black. I'll hide the edges so you can see it better. And I actually want the gradient to go 90 degrees, so I can just take the gradient tool and drag up from the bottom to the top. Now I want to make a copy of this object and put it on its own layer, so the quickest way to do that is just to duplicate the layer by dragging the layer name down to the new layer icon. I'm going to double click this to give it its own name, call it highlight and change the color of it if you want, and there it is below the original layer. Now I need to make one last layer below the other two, and if you press Command Option while clicking on the new layer icon, it places the new layer below the others, which is kind of a handy shortcut. I'm going to name this one Gradient and click OK, and then hide the other two. Now just draw a square that fills the artboard, and I'm going to fill it with this radial gradient. And here's a funny thing with a gradient tool. If you click once rather than drag, you get this kind of spotlight effect. So I'm just going to click near the top center of my square. Now I'm going to turn on the original layer with the grid and it looks kind of funky. It needs a highlight since we have a spotlight coming from the top. So that's where the highlight layer comes in. And I'm going to select that by clicking on the target circle in the layer and fill that with white. I'll hide the edges so you can see it better. 
Now I'm going to nudge that up just a couple clicks using the up arrow on the keyboard. And now it's done. So once you learn how to use the transform effect, you can quickly create a grid like this out of almost any shape. Add some gradients and some highlights, and you've got a realistic metal grill.